the Lord again. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, we can always enjoy being in the presence of God. Yeah, we can always enjoy being in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, he's here with us. I will go direct and invite him over here. Um, I will introduce him. Uh, his name is Apostle Malambo, as we can see on the projection, is a missionary from Zambia. Um, uh, from Zambia is the Sam, Apostle Samuel Malambo is the Vice President, Africa Israel Initiative. It's an organization, the Africa Israel Initiative. He's the Vice President of the SEM. Uh, the office is at uh, Trigger Towers here in Nairobi. He fellowships uh, in Happy Church, Nairobi. He's married to one Reverend Josephine Nyambura Malambo. He's a Kenyan. She's a Kenyan. Uh, they have five children, two daughters and three sons. And uh, two sons are married in Kigali. One son is getting married in Zambia. Uh, one daughter is in business in Zambia. One daughter is in Chiromo doing actuarial science. And um, that is the profile of our speaker. Uh, I'd like to invite him as he comes over. We can proceed to sing the chorus of the song that we have been doing. This morning, O oh God, for the time that you have given unto us, O oh Lord, that we may partake of your word this morning, O oh King of Glory. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the joy, O oh God, that you've put in this day, O oh King of Glory. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is before us, O oh King of Glory. Thank you, Lord, for the speaker of the day, O oh King of Glory. We thank you for his life, O oh God. Thank you for his ministry, Almighty Father. And thank you, O oh God, for the word that you have put in him, O oh God, that he may bring unto us, Almighty Father. May you use him, O oh God, this morning to the glory and honor of your holy name. May you give him speech from above, O oh God, to the glory and honor of your name. I give you praise. I give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, greetings in Jesus' name. That a name, amen, doesn't sound saved. I said greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. That sounds better, but not best. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. That sounds better. 
Well, I give God the glory. I have not come alone. I've come with a team. So I think my team can just stand here quickly. You just give your name and who you are and what you do. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I am a legion. I carry many people around. Every place I go, I have people around me because they believe in me and I've touched their lives. God bless you. Praise be to God. My name is Sami Mbatia. I'm a born again Christian. Uh, I am a student at the Technical University of Kenya. And for me, Apostle has touched my heart and I love him so much because he has something from the Lord. Praise be to God. Mungu wabariki. Amen. Buona sifiwe. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your neighbor? It's church, man. Tell them unanibamba sana. Unanibamba. All right. So this is church. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is the University of Nairobi. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to be here. My name is Edwin Mushina. I'm a journalist. Um, I met Apostle Malambo when I was at Multimedia University of Kenya doing communication, left in 2016. And I used to really invite him uh, to speak to the students when I was in the leadership there. And I thank God that I could be here. Uh, I usually like following him when he is going to such, uh, you know, to minister in such places. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. yes uh, and I probably I could say that the reason I couldn't come with my wife is because I'm not married. Uh, so, <laughs> so probably, probably that's the reason that I usually follow him in such, you know, platforms. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. May the Lord bless you. So much happy to be at the university. You know, when we're out there, we say University of Nairobi is the university. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Now, Wapenda Sana, God bless you. Sante. Okay. Thank you. Uh, praise God. I'm Bernard Njagi, and I'm born again. Uh, I'm a friend to Apostle Malambo. We met in 2004. I used to serve in a certain church. And that's where we met at Sianda House, just next in along uh, Koinange Street at the basement. We had a church there. We used to pray for Koinange Street University Way. That's where we met at the basement. And uh, now we are still friends up to date. He has been an, uh, a blessing and of great impact to my life. So I can say, listen and hear to what he says. He has the insight and the grace from God. Otherwise, um, I'm married, I have uh, a wife, and I have two kids. I've been married for seven years now. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to be here. I'm a graphic designer, so I do business, and alongside that, I'm involved in ministry with him. So I'm happy to be here and proud to be associated with him. And you guys are blessed. I feel so happy when I'm here. So God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Buonesu sifiwe. I'm Maureen. Elisha is my husband. Olewawe nyawana. Sai. Lakini ngojia kidogo. Praise the living God. I'm humbled to be under Apostle Malambo. He's my spiritual father. And I bless the Lord for that. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we please appreciate my wife in a powerful way? Amen. At least that is encouraging. I am Pastor Elisha. I bless the Lord to be here. I am the administrator and the personal assistant to Apostle, and I'm honored by the grace of God to serve in that capacity at this time. And I thank God for you people. It's a blessing. I met Apostle Malambo before I got married. He mentored us, both of us. Uh, now I'm a father of uh, two kids, uh, not counting the one coming. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so uh, we bless the Lord, and thank you very much, Dad. It's a blessing to be with you. And I can tell you, uh, I've never been disappointed serving with him. May the Lord bless you and be ready for an explosive moment. The Lord bless you. Thank you. I have not wasted my time. I've invested it. Because you needed that to connect. If you are not connected, you become congested. So I pray you are connected. Are you connected? Amen. Amen. Now, this morning, I have a small assignment. One of the most important things we do is to disseminate information. In the olden times when we were being raised, we believed that we learn through experience. 
And so we said in our time, experience is the best teacher. But when I continued growing, I discovered experience will kill you. If somebody who had an experience died, and you also want experience, you also die. So you have to learn from people who have experience, you extract from them information. Information becomes your best teacher. Come on. That's what makes me relevant here. I was born again on the 27th of August, 1979. When some of you, they were still thinking about you, they were praying about you, and some of you are still being formed in the spiritual. I thank God today you are here. Now you listen to a man who has been born again from 1979 coming to speak today. If you begin to know how much time I've spent through experience to acquire the knowledge I have today, you don't need my experience, but you need my information from my experience to change your destiny from today without going through 39 years. You missed a place to say amen. I thought that was a very exciting place. You are still observing me. <laughs> now, I come here today legally and with all authority, spiritually by age and by experience and by knowledge to come and give you information. Are you understanding? That's why I'm here today. I don't come like a preacher to shout at you and tell you jump three times, 15 times. No, I'm just here to give you information. I will communicate it in a very simple way, in a good structure. There are four important points which I have to raise to speak to you, to give you information. Four points. How many points? How many? That four sounds weak. How many? Speak like you ate breakfast. How many of you took breakfast this morning? Come on, then speak like you, have, you still have the content. How many points? Four. Speak like you mean it. Four. Now, we are speaking about the power of association. That's our topic we're handling today, which is also called the replica. Now, what is very important on the background, you need to understand that association does not begin with you today. Association begins with God. When you go to the scriptures in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when God finished creating everything, he went to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and he said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. Association began there. In the time of the Tower of Babel, in Genesis chapter 11, when God confused one language that made people united, and because they had a project which never brought glory to God, God decided to confuse the languages and give them many languages. I'm sure that's where all the languages we have today were born from. It is still part of association. Now, when we come to see at the points that we are speaking about today, we want to look on how do we establish a common ground as evangelists, those who are saved, those who are supposed to carry the gospel, so as to con con contextualize it, the gospel without confirming. In other ways, you, without telling anybody you are saved. How will people know you are saved? How do you witness to them without telling them you are saved? Are you understanding? Your lifestyle, number one, must the major thing that must speak for you. In my personal life and experience, I learned one thing from Ezra. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. The Bible says Ezra, number one, prepared his heart. Number two, to study. Number three, to do what he has discovered. Number four, to teach. Today, we have many people who study to teach. There are very few people who study to do. And because they have not prepared their hearts, whatever the Bible tells them to do, they don't do. But they will tell others not to do it. That's the first challenge we have. Therefore, I borrowed that principle from Ezra. I began studying the Bible for me. Then I observe it. And when it works, I teach it. I go to many high-profile meetings. I speak to corporate leaders. 
I speak to military men. I speak to presidential candidates. I speak to many areas of ministry using the same Bible because I know no institution here on earth was established without the Bible. I no longer depend on the educational level. I don't depend on what I learned from school because I discovered you can have a PhD, you can have a master's, you can have a, a, a bachelor's, you can have a diploma, you can have a certificate, or you can have nothing. When you die, nothing goes beyond the grave, including PhD. You can be a PhD order today. When you die, your services plus your doc the, the, the doctorate degree is buried with you. Your wife will not need it, your children will not need it, nobody will need it. You go with it. Because it was a temporal knowledge you acquired through institutions which were instituted by men here on earth, and therefore it expires, because they also expired. Then I realized I need to go higher and enroll in the divine school of knowledge. In the divine school of knowledge, the principal, the teacher, the lecturer, and the author of all is the Holy Spirit. The moment I allow the Holy Spirit to begin working in my life to teach, today I speak to people things they have never written, found anywhere. That therefore qualifies me today to be an author. I have written five books now to teach the content I have discovered in the school of the Holy Ghost. To be able to share the information I have acquired through the school of the Holy Ghost and I've discovered no institution can satisfy what I know because it goes beyond the professor who supervised you, who died. I hope you understand. That's the background I come from. So when I enrolled in that school, I began to depend on the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you. How many things? All things. And he will reveal to you things to come. Therefore, I realize the greatest teacher is the Holy Ghost. Do you know why the Holy Ghost is important? Because from creation foundation, he was there. Come on. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work in trinity. What makes them a trinity is because God sits on the throne and he's the author and he says, let there be light. And Jesus says, amen. The Holy Spirit produces the light. There is nothing that God on the throne authors. Jesus says, give me two weeks, let me think about it. There is nothing that God the Father authors and Jesus Christ approves. The Holy Spirit will say, I have a workload. I think give me about 48 hours. To clear what is on the space. Immediately God speaks. The Holy Sp Jesus approves. The Holy Spirit effects it. So we say they work in Trinity. They are one because they are one in operation. Though they may be different. In their, in their personalities. God sits on the throne. Jesus is on the right. Either sitting or standing depending on the occasion. <laughs> are you understanding? When he's interceding for you. He cannot sit down. You stand. So depending on the occasion. But the Holy Spirit always hovers around them to get information that has to be disseminated as quick as possible. So God authors, Jesus approves, Holy Spirit manifests. You need to know that. Say amen. amen. So when the world was being created, the earth was being created, God said, let there be. And the Holy Spirit produced it. That's why today you cannot qualify to be a witness of God. Not even Jehovah's witness. Because you were not there when God was creating. A witness is somebody who is there when God says, let there be light. You are behind him saying, Amen. <laughs> but because you are not there, you can't qualify. But the Holy Spirit was there from the foundation of the earth. He was there in the conception of Jesus. He was there when Jesus died to glorify him. He was there after the Pentecostal day. Today, the Holy Spirit is still here. And because of him, I can receive power. I can qualify to be a witness of God, Jesus Christ, because of the Holy Ghost. Not because of my education, not because of my religion, not because of my doctrine knowledge, but the Holy Spirit qualifies it. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes, not when you graduate from university. 
Many of you brag with your degrees. You feel you have achieved because you have a Prado, you have a Mercedes Benz. That's part of achievement, but that's not eternal. It ends at the grave. The car you are driving today will never follow you in the mortuary. It will be at home, packed, waiting for a new owner to change the logbook, remove your small name, put another man's name, who never worked for it. And you will drive it to places you never wanted to go. They will take it there because you will not be there to defend it. That's how embarrassing life can be. I pray that even when you are studying here, may the Lord cause you to invest in eternity because there is a life after this life. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. There is a life after this life. Only a fool after all the creation witness can say there is no God. Because the creation itself testifies to you. There is somebody involved. You could not come into existence by your own. That's why you don't choose when to die. He is the one who decides. Whether you are young or you are old. If he puts a stamp tomorrow, you are going. The doctors can try. They will tell you, we tried our best, but we could have failed. Doctors can treat, but God can divinely heal you. Healing is divinity. Doctors will do their part. Medical professionals will do their part. But God has a final say. We have a song which we say, who has a final say? Jehovah, we sing it without understanding. Now I'm here to challenge you. So that when you come from this meeting, start thinking straight. Because there is a life after this life. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, what is the significance of having mentors or people who will connect to us? To our destinies. Very important. I have risen ranks through mentors. I have risen ranks through mentors. Mentors are simply people who are ahead of where I'm going. Who are people who have achieved in the area I'm deciding to go. Therefore, you need those people. How do you get them? God divinely connects people. In Acts chapter 18, verse 9 and 10, God sends Paul. He tells him, go into Jerusalem. Don't keep quiet when you go there because you are a stranger. Use the opportunity of your strangership. There, speak. Because nobody will hurt you. When you are speaking, your identity is shown. But nobody will hurt you because I have people I have already prepared there. So who brings people your way? It is God. Are you understanding? Is it making sense? In John chapter 10 verse 29, Jesus says, Everyone my father has given to me. No man will snatch them. That means who gives people? God, come on, who gives people? Who gives good friends? Who gives connections? Who gives opportunity? Who gives money? Who gives life? So you have nothing. You will be a fool trying to survive in the world belonging to God plus you without God. Total foolishness and confusion. <laughs> Somebody say amen. So we need mentors in our lives, people who will walk us through. A spiritual father is somebody who oversees you, guides you, rebukes you. But a mentor is one who coaches you how it is done. A mentor can come out from his office, go with you in the field, dress what you are dressed to show you how it's done. Therefore, without mentors, you operate in assumptions. You don't know the way and you don't know how to get there, then you have stress. But when you have mentors, they walk you the way. Oh, come on. Mentors walk you the way. You want to be a pilot? Look for a pilot who has been in the service for 52 years. Then you say, sir, do you have books? Yes. Go to such a store. Buy my books. You begin to read the material. He will take you through his lifestyle and how he has achieved you can walk with mentors, not necessarily by following them, but when you are near or close, you can follow them. But you can read books, you can buy materials, you can listen to audios, you can listen to DVDs which they have produced to show you their work, how they've achieved where they are. 
That is a requirement to everybody growing today. That's why I came with the conclusion that every knowledge has a school. Come on, tell somebody every knowledge has a school. Speak like you had breakfast. Problem you speak like you have not eaten. Say every knowledge has a school. Come on, speak with confidence. Say every knowledge has a school. If you want to become a driver, you don't go to the butchery. You go to what? Driving school to get what? Knowledge in, school, in driving. You want to become a doctor, you go to a medical school to get doctorate knowledge. For you to become an, a pilot, you must go to the training where they do. You look for colleges according to the calling you feel is inside you. Thank God in our time, we used to, used to have career advisors. They will look at my performance in the high school and begin to shape me and mold me in which course I can enroll after I finish school because they will look at my subjects, which I'm good at. And they will give you three options of career to choose. And they will tell you the first one with your performance now in mathematics, English, and sciences, this is where you can be. And you can become this or this or this. So you find when we finish school, we already have a guidance. If I know I did not do well in mathematics, I can either receipt or I can take the second option. So I was guided. Why? Because we had mentors who mentored us into the career. Before you get marriage, don't just get marriage because you have your feelings. Find somebody who has been in marriage for 32 years and above. They will tell you how they have lived with the same wife without changing them. If you don't go to the school of marriage to acquire knowledge in marriage, you depend on feelings. After five years, feelings change. The same person you called sweetheart, mango juice, popo pie, becomes piri piri in my porridge. Because feelings change. But when you are vested in knowledge in marriage, you will stick in the institution, pay the price, endure every challenges to the end because you have knowledge in that institution. Today we have people who marry by psychology. Others marry by feelings. Others marry by profession. Just because you are in the same class and you take A's, one is A plus, one is A minus. So you say, now we are paired. So the minus is for the lady, plus is for me, so I'm the head of the house. No knowledge. There are people who have children today, they give birth to babies without going to the school of parenting. You find the baby is crying, the man is crying, the woman is crying. Because nobody doesn't know what to do. So they think when the baby starts crying, all of them have to cry. Because you have not gone to the school of knowledge for parenting. This life is a school. There are things God will allow you to go through, not to kill you, but to mold you through them to become something in the future. I wish I had all the time if I was given two hours to preach, I would have given you my profile from where I rose from to be where I am today. I am now the current sitting vice president for Africa Israel Initiative. We were able to bring 19 countries, including Israel, Norway, America, UK, and the whole Africa here in Kenya two days ago. And that's when I was inaugurated as the second vice president after the one who was there has risen now to president. I began as a regional director for Southern Africa. I was heading 10 countries under my docket. And I rose from there two years ago to Kenya as an executive director for finance and administration. From that docket, I've gone now to vice president. I've not just achieved that from nothing. There's a profile of where God picked me from. But if I tell you how my primary school, secondary school, and college, and every place I've passed through, experience even in business, into being a technical manager for Samsung, from 1996 to 2000, I was a technical manager for Samsung, the whole country in my country, in Zambia, the whole Zambia. I resigned that job in the year 2000, walked out of a good salary, out of a good employment you are looking for. I walked out of it to serve God. I've seen God lift my profile from where I was 
to a great man today nations can listen to. Today, I travel to nations. I've been to Israel twice. I went there in 2012. I was there in 2016 for the Holocaust School of Studies for two weeks to study about Judaism, Christianity, and the Middle East crisis. So you see a man who is not a failure in life, who did not abort business because he failed. I was successful in every place God placed me, but he has promoted me to do what I'm doing today. Today, God is using me through my mouth to change the lives of people. And I count it a privilege to you today that I will give you part of my knowledge for you to succeed. Those who are not clapping, they have not found themselves. Those who are clapping, they have connected something. <laughs> Point number three. How important is it to fellowship with fellow brethren? As the word of God advocates for the sake of fellowship of brethren. Fellowship of brethren helps us to tap into each other's graces. Every person has grace. Come on, say that. Say every person has grace. Come on, say every person has grace. And every person has a gift. Come on, say it. It's free of charge. I will not charge you for it. Every person has what? Come on, every person has what? Now, if you have not found your gift, you become irrelevant in, on earth. Your gift gives you relevance. If you go to state house today and they find you outside loitering with an ID or a passport and you say, I am Kenyan, Sanifu, Utafungwa. Because as long as you have no ID and you have no department, you will be put as a loiterer, number one, number two, a suspect of Al Shabaab. You can be arrested by loitering around state house without a mission. But the moment you have a department where you belong, which is your gift, there is a place where you operate from. And they will give you a, ma a number with an identity and your name. They will say, Joseph, driver, transport department. Sasa ukifika hapo, ata wale wa security wakiangaria tu wanaona badge, wanasema hii ni okweli, weingia. Si weni driver ya eni. Sasa imagine na una badge. Unasema tu mimi ni mkenya, nimekuja tu nizururi hapa ni wangaria kwa mahali president anaka. Utashikwa. Wengi wenu amja discover gift mungu amaweka ndani yako. So unazuru nazuru tu. Unajaribu kuya pilot two months, unakwit. Unajaribu kuwa kuchure, unawana mathematics imesumbua, unakwit. You try to be a lecturer in English, you begin speaking broken English, good morning this evening, you quit. Every time you are a quitter, you are a quitter because you have not found your gift. Your gift makes you relevant. That's why the Bible says your gift shall make room for you and bring you before great people. You can be a footballer and you package it with the Holy Ghost, package it with the word of God, package it with everything. And many people start hiring you. You'll be flying in first class business with presidents. Not because you are a president, but your gift shall introduce you. Your gift shall make room for you. Your gift shall position you. Your gift will give you relevance in this life. The moment you don't find your gift, what you are called to do, you are a confused human being living on organized planet Earth. Your life becomes miserable. That's why you find people, you tell them, who will marry you? Anyone. Where do you want to stay? Anywhere. What food can you eat? Anything. What kind of job can you give you? Any. How much do we pay you? Anything. But the people who know their gift know their value. Come on. You know your value. When you go yourself in the marketplace, even during an interview, you have such confidence, you tell them, I give you six months. If you employ me, I will increase your profit margin by 40%. Because you are talking from a well-informed, you know what God can do through your life. Don't go and say anything, anywhere, anyone. No. Your gift gives you relevance. If you don't know your gift, you begin squeezing. That's why people compete. People who compete, 
are for two reasons. One, when your season expires, you begin now try to go back to fit in your children's camp. Because your time came, you couldn't perform. Now when your children are shining, you want to be there and say, So you can compete now. Or number two, you have not matured in what you are supposed to do. When you are still a baby sucking thumb, you'll be competing with others. But when you mature, you find your place. When you find your place, you operate. And God lifts you from there to be relevant. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says, As you have received gifts, use them to minister to one another in the manifold of grace. There is a grace God has released for every gift. But you must first find your gift to function, to touch the lives of others. So what creates fellowship is for us to relate with other people, learn from others, get people who admire you. Do you know you need to be admired? Come on. You can be very beautiful. You look at yourself by yourself and you check on the mirror and say, I am beautiful. You go out, nobody tells you. Not even your chickens in the compound. <laughs> it will be very frustrating. But when you meet people in the fellowship, they tell you, wow. How is your success? You look successful. How is it? You have a place to tell your testimony. Because you have people who celebrate you. People who appreciate you. And people who accept you. In the fellowship, you must go into a fellowship where you are accepted, you are celebrated, and appreciated. Don't live in a fellowship where you are intimidated. Nobody wants to recognize who you are. There are people full of people who think they have everything. You will never grow. Fellowship is a place where you grow because you have other people who you can learn from. There are other people who can tell you the truth and tell you today you look ugly. The way you have worn this wearing, you just look like something else. Go back and change. You need people like that. But if you have no fellowship, you come out even naked on the street and you say, it's my choice. It's my body. So in the fellowship, we borrow we build behavior, we build character, we tap from other people's gifts to utilize ours. We celebrate others to be celebrated. We encourage others to be encouraged. Hello? Are you still here? Am I making sense? Since I started. I came with a lot of sense. I pray that you tap in it. Fungua Wi-Fi, now fungua Bluetooth. Chukua zote. Amen? Bado mko hapa? So fellowship becomes key. That's where you grow. Charity begins where? Fellowship. Come on. You know there are fathers. Me, I've raised my sons. Every time I was, I was at home, every time I come home, by before 7 o'clock news, I'm in the house. And when our sons were not yet married, we will sit, all of us. Mom makes dinner, puts it on the dining. We all sit. I eat with my sons. I begin to see how they chew, their character, how, what is their table manners. I check it. That's fellowship. So when I see my son, he's going, I tell him, you don't eat like that. I do it at home because charity begins where? At home. Tomorrow you'll be a president and you go to Australia. You learned it from home. If your home doesn't mold you, it will be amplified when you get to the top. That's why the Bible says a fool is mistaken for a wise man when he's not saying anything. But the moment you give him a microphone and the way I've done now, you say, good morning this evening. They say, oh, kumbe uyu mutu uyu. Akona bandia certificate. And he talk, uh, talk happy, river road. Amen. So fellowship helps you to grow, helps you to learn from others, help you to build character, help you to share who you are, what you have, and what you know. In fellowship, you share what you have, what you are, and what you know. Because you meet people who tap from you. You can be a mentor also to some people who are growing up in certain areas. Through fellowship, you are able to interact with one another. Is it clear? The final point. What are the eminent dangers that lay there when we as believers associate without boundaries? Now, boundaries are defined by one word. Discipline. 
Somebody say discipline. Come on, say discipline. The moment you lack discipline, you will be sent to China for further studies. Instead of coming with a PhD degree, you come with a Chinese wife and a baby. That's lack of discipline. Or some of you think it's an achievement. Is that what the government took you there for? Boundaries are created through discipline. That means you can associate even with the opposite sex and you look at every woman and you classify them by wisdom through discipline. You know this is somebody to help us in the house. This one is a daughter to my elder sister. This one is my niece. But when you lack discipline, every woman is a wife. Are you understanding? Can you see the difference? So what will give boundaries in your relationships? Discipline. Today, many institutions are destroyed because of the spirit of immorality. Because you find there are no boundaries. Bosses can go out with their secretaries. In the night, they say, we are all working overtime. They close official work at 5. From 5.30, is personal affairs. Up to 8 o'clock, they'll say, no, we had a lot of work today. Could be the extended work from the official work to personal work. When you lack discipline, your relationships are not defined. But discipline helps you to respect others and put boundaries. If you are a man of discipline, you can be anywhere and there will be no room of scandals. In my nature of work, I travel week after week. Today I am here. On Tuesday I'll be flying to Eldoret for a night. I come back. The other week I'll be going to another town. I know all counties in Kenya more than all of you seated here, including the bishops and many others. Because every week I'm not at home. But what has kept my profile from the time I began working here is discipline. I was in Israel on the seventh floor, room number 713, seventh floor, alone. No wife, nobody from Kenya. I was the one, only Africa, two Africans, one from Ghana and me, representing Zambia and Kenya. Nobody was there. But you go to Israel today, all the officials who hosted us, today they are still talking about my testimony. They say, Apostle Malambo is a friend. Right now I receive a congratulation. Congratulation message from Israel, from the people who hosted us. They sent their congratulatory message. Why? Because they know the profile that I've built while there to be where I am today. They now know he deserves to be a vice president. Why? They look at your profile. Now, can you imagine if they found, no, I have left a baby who is a Jew. They will say, no, no, there are issues here. You put such a man, don't tell him to come back here again. So discipline, lack of discipline can close your doors. Lack of your discipline can cause you to lose opportunities. Lack of discipline can cause you to have certain areas and barriers created in your life, in the opportunities God creates. So discipline will keep you there. It will define boundaries. When you say you are a managing director, operate in the parameter of managing director, respect other people's wives, respect your secretary, respect the cleaner, because not all of them are your wives. Discipline. In an institution like this, where you are free, your parents are not here. Only discipline will make you graduate here and run a life which is organized and responsible. People without discipline, they will come out of this institution with HIV AIDS. Some of them will come out with babies. Others will come out with a PhD half with 14 wives. If you don't define yourself by the discipline, you will be able to fail to achieve what God has purposed for you. So I pray that discipline becomes your master. Okay? Discipline becomes your what? Your master. Without your parents. Some of you think right now you, 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 you can be able to get married quickly to solve problems. I'm telling you even when you are married, problems still come. There are times your wife will not be well or the husband is not well. Your wife has a small baby. And you have to travel for further studies two years in America alone. So you find the problems you ran away to rush into marriage, they still follow you. So if you never conquered when you began, you will never conquer when you are married. Somebody say, I hear you. Speak like you ate breakfast, say, I hear you. I hear you. Come on, say, I hear you. I hear you. 
I close with this. Let your life shine. Your what? Come on, your what? So that people who don't know God will see God not by you talking, they will see him by the way you live. I have many places I go. Recently I had two incidences in Naivasha. A young lady I approached, I found on the reception to receive me in the guest house where I was. When she saw me the first day, second day, she followed to me and said, man of God, I sense you are a man of God. I want the life you are living in salvation. I want to be saved. Imagine, I knew she was not saved when she confessed, but she confessed when she saw my life. Not me telling her. So your life should shine. I have so many testimonies, many. A certain young man came in the restaurant where I was three weeks ago, seated in the restaurant. He came past around me the second day. He was just looking at me. And finally, he came to greet me. And he told me, man of God, I just saw you coming here two days ago. I was very pleased in my spirit. I had an assurance that even in our generation, there are men of God who serve God with sincerity. And so I've decided to come and greet you because I have that witness. If your life does not show, you are the one to tell people, I am born again. And they tell you, no, 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 no. We, even if you brought 1,000 witnesses, some of them are dead. And you swear, mm, they will still not believe. May your light shine. May your gift be prominent to show forth light that the people who are not saved will be able to admire your life. Don't live a life lesser than those who are not born again. You must live a life higher than those who are not born again so that when they see your light, they will desire your salvation. Stand up on your feet. Oh, here yeah, you don't clap, huh? You, feel me, you want to make me feel like I've done nothing. <laughs> Unajua kuna wale watu Hata umufanyie mazuri Hata unataka kumfunza Na hakuna kitu anajua Anakupatia tu sura ya kusema Iyo yote tunajua si utuambia ingine If you don't appreciate knowledge given to you After 39 years of salvation And you never find this in Sokomjinga I've shared it from my experience is it a blessing? Have you learned something? May you not take everything, but pick what works for you. It will change your life forever. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Now, before I close the broadcast, I would like to appeal to those who never knew or thought there is a life after this life. You have never made a decision to allow Jesus to come into your life. You can never live in the world created by the word without the word. And the word is Jesus, because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh, who is Jesus. Without Jesus in you, you cannot accept the Bible, which is a confirmation word of who he is. And you cannot receive the Holy Spirit, who is an inspiration to connect you to God. If you are such a person, you have never given your life to Jesus, or you gave your life to Jesus, and you backslid for some reason or another, and today you say, I realize now there is a life after my degree. My degree will remain in the grave. It doesn't go beyond, but there is a life beyond which I have to start cultivating now to know God better. Not through breakthrough, but know him with experience by walking with him. If you are such a person you have never given, let's close all our eyes. Begin to pray, everybody. Just begin to thank God for what you have received. Pray God for what you have received, which is yours. You may not have taken all the four points, but at least there's one thing you have received which is related to you. Begin to pray that God will enable you to be strong in that area, to walk a life worthy, to use the gift God has given you, to shine, to walk in discipline in every level of ranks. As you go higher, may discipline continue to grow in your life, to keep you steady, to keep you focused, to keep you established until you achieve. If there's anybody who has never received Jesus and you want to receive him today, just indicate by lifting your hand where you are. I want to pray for you before we close this session. Anyone who wants to receive Jesus, you have never thought there is a life after this life, but I want to challenge you today, there is a life after this life. You have never made a decision to receive Jesus. You have never decided to live for him, and he will live in you. Just lift up your hand where you are. I want to pray for you. Is there any such a person? Heavenly Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you for the truth 
you have enabled me to share. Thank you for the grace to speak about association, about boundaries, about fellowship and mentorship. May these things, Lord, begin to operate in your lives. Connect us to the right mentors to raise us in the fear of the Lord and to bring glorious results, to return glory and honor to you and to be achievers. I pray for those who are not saved in this building. I pray that this word will not rest in their heart and ears. You will continue speaking to them and they will make a decision for you. Father, I bless you and I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your children, to declare, share them to them this information from my life experience. I pray that your name is glorified and let this produce fruit in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom, shalom. The Lord bless you. See you next time. Stay tuned to Jesus FM. God bless you.